Hey guys, in this video we're talking about interest rate changes and how they play out in the open economy. That's right. So when we get that question about an interest rate change and then it wants to know how all these things kind of unfold because of the interest rate change, that's what this video is all about. Now, here's the thing. This little model right up here at the top is what I want you to really focus on because it's a simple model that really gets us all the answers that we generally want to get to when we have an interest rate change. Again, it's this top part of my whiteboard right here. I'm going to also use the dollar market, so I'm going to kind of show a little bit more detail here, but this is the main thing I want you to embrace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer all of these questions and all of these questions based on an interest rate change. So let's get to it, all right? Let's just say we get a problem in which the Fed lowers the IORB, right? Well, the IORB is an administrative tool. It's a policy tool to change their policy rate, which is the federal funds rate. So it causes the federal funds rate to go down, which causes interest rates in our financial markets to go down, okay? So we get interest rates going down. That's the start of the problem. Basically, the Fed is doing easy monetary policy. Interest rates in the United States go down. Now, when this happens, the first thing that we should all kind of think about here is that is going to get money to flow away from the U.S. financial markets, right? Where does money go? Money goes to higher interest rates. And now interest rates over in Europe are relatively higher. So when that interest rate goes down in the United States, we see these capital outflows from the United States to other countries, including going to Europe's financial markets, right? And so that's the first thing I want you to understand. And I like to put a little one right here, which this is kind of like the initiator, initiating movement, right? In other words, this is the shift, okay? This is gonna be our shift in our currency market. Now, if we just kind of think about this, right? Okay, interest rate goes down, money goes this way. That is increasing the supply of dollars. So of course, the dollar is going to depreciate because dollars are going out of the United States. So this increase in the supply of dollars. We're demanding euros, so of course the euro is going to appreciate, okay? When the dollar depreciates, it's depreciating relative to the euro. Therefore, the euro is of course appreciating relative to the dollar. Now, because of this change in the exchange rate, we're going to get this flow right there, right? When the dollar depreciates, this stuff becomes cheaper. When the euro appreciates, this stuff becomes more expensive. And I could have said it a few different ways, right? When the dollar depreciates, this stuff becomes more expensive. When the euro appreciates, this stuff becomes cheaper. Anyhow, when you get those flows going this direction, you're going to get these counter flows happening here, which we should understand because our balance of payments is going to balance, right? So if we associate the financial account, which we should, with the financial market, and of course the current account with the product market, which again we should, remember that first sub-account of the current account is the sales and purchases of goods and services. So that's what we want to do is if we get these credits to the European financial account, we're then going to get debits, right? And we understand that based on the change in the currency values. And again, we can say we're getting debits to the United States financial account, and therefore we're going to get these credits to the U.S current account. So that's all there really is to it, okay? We get this number one, that's the shift. Oh, by the way, I like to put a little two here. This is the movement in the foreign exchange market. I'm going to show that in a second, but anyhow, the interest rate change caused the shift. When the currencies changed, okay, that caused the movement. And again, I'm going to play that out here in just a moment, all right? But I think I'm already ready to answer these questions, okay? So what's going to happen when the interest rate goes down? We're going to get this increase in the supply of dollars heading out. So we've got an increase in the supply of dollars. Europeans are not going to want to bring their money here. Therefore, they're not going to want the dollar. So we get a decrease in the demand for the dollar. Both of these are going to cause the dollar to depreciate. We can easily see from our visual, we've got money flowing out of the United States financial account. So we're going to get debits which will move us towards deficit, okay? And then we're gonna get, of course, money flowing into our current account, so those are credits, moving us towards surplus right there. And of course, because that dollar depreciated, that, dollar, that, that money's coming into our product market to buy our goods, our net exports are gonna go up. Over here in Europe, okay, we've got, again, we've got the interest rate going down, okay? Europeans staying here, they're not gonna supply their euros because they don't want to come to the United States with their money. 
However, the Americans are wanting to come to Europe, so there's going to be this increase in the demand for euros, both of which cause the euro to appreciate. We can easily see money's flowing into their financial account. They're getting credits, so that's moving them towards surplus. Money's flowing out of their current account. We're getting debits, okay, moving their current account towards deficit. And of course, because the euro appreciated, this stuff became more ex expensive. I could also say because the dollar depreciated, this stuff became more expensive to Americans. Their net exports are gonna go down. And there you go, we've got all the answers that we needed. But just to kind of finish it off, I wanna focus again on this one, two, this concept of shift and movement, okay? so that interest rate went down. And when that interest rate went down, like I said, Americans wanted to take their money that direction. We're gonna get an increase in the supply of dollars, zero one. So there's our increase in the supply of dollars. Europeans don't wanna come here with their savings. So they're gonna demand less dollars. And I think what I just wanna emphasize so much is these shifts are responses to the change in the interest rate, right? The exchange rate is the endogenous variable. When it changes, we don't get shifts, right? When the endogenous variable changes, we move along line. But the interest rate's not part of the model. It's causing the shift, and we get those two shifts. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to get these movements like this along the line. Now, why are we moving along the line? Because when the interest rate changed, we got an increase in supply and decrease in demand, we got a surplus of dollars. And that's why that dollar is going to depreciate. We can see it right here. This is a dollar market. We see that dollar depreciating. And when that dollar depreciates, hey, what's gonna happen is Europeans who are demanders of dollars, okay? Europeans are gonna demand more dollars. This is actually an increase in the quantity demanded, okay? Why? Because I'm going right. And that's the way we should be focused right here. You're seeing an increase in the quantity demanded. Again, having a horizontal orientation to this graph because we're talking about supply and demand. And we always have a horizontal orientation. We have supply and demand. So an increase in the quantity demanded of dollars to come buy our stuff because again, the dollar depreciates. Now, here's Americans decreasing the quantity supplied um, of dollars. And why are they decreasing it? Again, this is not the response to the interest rate. This is the response to the currency change, right? So they're decreasing the quantity supplied of dollars. Why? Because this stuff is more expensive. The movements, again, are happening because of what's happening to the exchange rate, okay? The shifts happened because of what happened to the interest rate. And then we get the movements to bring the market back into balance. Okay. So again, yes, the interest rate caused money to go this way, but the exchange market caused money to go or the exchange rate changed. The change in the exchange rate caused money to go back the opposite direction. Kind of a long video. But you didn't even really have to watch this part. Okay? That was that detail I just wanted to get into and explain the shift in the movement aspect. But this is the model that I generally want students to embrace. We get an interest rate change and it's really simple, right? Interest rate goes down, fine. Money's gonna go away from that, right? Money seeks out higher interest rates. When money goes this direction, it's gonna cause money to go this direction because of course our balance of payments has to balance when money goes into that exchange market. All right, it's gonna cause a change in the exchange rate and that exchange rate change is gonna cause that opposite flow. Shows the interdependence of that current account and the financial account and it lets us get all the answers that we want to get when we start with an interest rate change. Again, this problem started with an interest rate change and then we just kind of saw how everything unfolded from that. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.